this is a fantastic market because of the strength of the population. You have to Vietnamize your content here. I would tell them to come on board, tell them what they, uh, what they like or give them what they like. Um, Vietnam is a very, very dynamic and exciting market. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. My name is Phi Nguyen and I'm your host on Inside Vietnam. There has been much debate in the last quarter of 2010 and of course the first quarter of 2011 about where Vietnam is heading in terms of its macroeconomic indication. With the conclusion of the 11th National Party Congress in January 2011, the overall picture is certainly getting clearer. On today's show, I'd like to share the perspective of the Asian Development Bank about Vietnam's macroeconomic outlook with our special guest speaker, Mr. Ayumi Konishi, Country Director of ADB Vietnam. Greetings to you, Mr. Konishi, and thank you very much for joining us on Inside Vietnam. Probably the first question I would ask is, um, I remember an email that you sent me um, before TED, um, Chinese New Year, and you mentioned that um, probably Vietnam is more fit for the cat instead of the rabbit. Uh -huh. um, probably that's um, a very good statement that you would like to share your perspective on with the audience. Okay, so let me start with Sina Chukum Namoy. Now, it's very interesting, right? In other Asian countries, this year is a year of rabbit. Mm -hmm. But somehow in Vietnam, this year is a year of cat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I said that, you know, probably the cat really fits Vietnam's current situation much better than a rabbit. You know, because Vietnam's general macroeconomic situation is a little fragile right now. Fragile, fragile is a word that you yeah. use. I think you know, fragile could be a you know, right expression to use. I mean, then, you know, instead of stretching, you know, Vietnam may really wish to consolidate. Well, that's a great comment to start with. Um, let's talk about the good news and the bad news for Vietnam's macroeconomic outlook for 2011. Um, do you want to start with the good news or the bad news? Oh, good news, I think that, you know, the, when we look at industry, the increase in the domestic consumer market, there are a lot of important ingredients for Vietnam's economy to continue growing fast. You know, last year's, you know, 6.8% growth record, you know, certainly is among the highest in the whole Asia, or actually around the whole world. That's the GDP growth right, rate GDP, of GDP, 20, GDP, 2010. 2010. I mean, when, are you satisfied with that figure? Um, maybe it was a bit too high. A bit too high. You too think? high in a sense that actually, you know, we shouldn't really look at the, you know, growth rate in isolation from the rest of the, you know, numbers. Mm. And of course, you know, in the case of Vietnam, what the one number we got to be really looking at is inflation. Mm. Now, if Vietnam has tried to achieve a little lower rate of growth, mm. then the you know, inflation number could have been also smaller. Inflation in 2010 was reported to be 11.75%, is that right? Okay, that's a December you know, figure on year-on-year mm. -year basis. You know, if we were to take the annual average, mm. you know, it was still below 10%. Below 10%. So, yeah, you know, when you take the average. But mm. then, that was the end of the year, mm. you know, it was going up. Mm. And then, actually, from December to January, mm. it increased even further, right? Mm. And so, now we are looking at, you know, on year on year basis, you know, compared to February last year. Mm. Okay, the prices are, you know, more than 12% higher mm. than before, mm. which certainly is worrisome. Inflation is really the most significant source mm. of vulnerability of Vietnamese economy. Mm. What actually yeah. contributes to the rise of inflation rate okay. in Vietnam? Mm. Actually, Vietnam uses 40% you know, of the food items. The main part mm. driving the inflation rate was the food price, number one, and then education. Education? Yeah. Education cost, you know, mm. also actually a very important part. And then the government, you know, has raised the tuition fees in schools mm. since September last year. Now, many of the school-related fees have been going up. You know, for Vietnamese, you know, again, education is a very important part of the economy. 
people always talk about food prices and oil prices, and it's very interesting that you mentioned food prices and education costs on this show. Since September last year, you know, that's the time that, you know, the sort of current round of inflation has mm. really started. Mm. Those two items really stand out most. Mm. Um, oil prices, to really come to the, you know, the bad news part, you know, you're asking, that in the 2011, the global commodity prices mm -hmm. Uh, expected to go up together with the depreciation or uh, devaluation of the Vietnam is done. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have to really, you know, expect, you know, additional potentially inflationary pressure on Vietnam. When the inflation rate is high, mm -hmm. then, you know, people think that, okay, it's not a good idea to keep your money in mm -hmm. Vietnamese don mm -hmm. bank account. Instead, you know, you want mm. to shift your money either to the U.S. dollar mm. or to the gold. If, you know, more and more people do that, mm. then there's going to be further pressure mm. on Vietnamese dons mm. to devalue. And you have seen Vietnamese dong being devalued um, since, right. since the end of 2010 up to now. Right. And yep. do you expect it to continue? You know, the government has been saying for some time, we will not change the value of Vietnamese dong until Tet. So what happened after Tet, after Chinese after Tet, New Year? After Tet, the State Bank of Vietnam has mm. uh, announced 9.2% uh, of devaluation, uh, together with narrowing of the trading band. You know, mm. before it was plus minus 3%, mm. and they narrowed us, you know, this band to plus minus 1%, 9.2% you know, devaluation. Well, you know, a good number of people in the market really didn't expect mm. the size of devaluation to be this much. Does that help Vietnam with, in terms of export? At the end, mm. true that you know, it's going to benefit uh, exporters somewhat, mm. but I don't think you know, that was really the main intention of mm. the authorities. What is the main intention then? I mean, if you really think about the differentials between mm. the official exchange rate, the so-called... the official one. Yeah, free, free, market, free, market <laughs> free market exchange rate, exchange rate. You, know, you know, there has been, you know, a huge split, mm. you know, for s several months already. Um, What's the difference in terms of percentage? About, you know, it, it's been around 10%. 10%? 10%, That's a lot. yeah, it, it, was, it was big. The authorities have been trying to defend mm. the currency mm. in the market, you know, which wasn't really the easiest thing to do. Mm. Um, so, and also, you know, because the differentials are so big, mm. you know, there weren't so many sellers mm. of the U.S. dollars, you know, in the official market. Mm. Then, you know, which made the circulation of the U.S. dollar more difficult, or you know, mm. what people say, liquidity problems in mm. the U.S. dollars. You know, that was there. Mm. So this, you know, the 9.2 percent, you know, devaluation, in a way, it was very much in line with the market realities. Mm. So, you know, our expectation, or you know, my hope, mm. is that you know this devaluation will basically uh, enable the market to function. Mm. more smoothly, then, mm. you know, liquidity should be really coming back. So, mm. you know, from that perspective, mm. you know, I think it's very, uh, very positive. We're actually at trade deficit at the moment, is that right? Yeah. And what's the, what's the figure for 2010? Um, some people predict about 14 billion. 14 billion. I tend to think that it will be a little smaller than that. How's that in comparison to his historical data of the past few years? Um, a lot less, a lot bigger. It's, it's going to be about the same, or a little more than mm. before. But then, I really would like to make this point clear. For Vietnam, trade deficit is not a problem. It's not no. a problem. No, mm. it's not. It's See, not. the trade deficit you know, can be a problem if you don't have money to pay for. Okay, trade deficit has been, okay, big. But then... What's the percentage of uh, GDP at the moment, our trade deficit here in Vietnam? You know, around 12, 13 percent, 13 percent. And that's pretty normal for you in terms of um, economic outlook? Now, when you think about the inflow of money coming yeah. in, yeah. then, okay, 12 billion, it's not a problem. First of all, you know, Vietnam, it's receiving a lot of, you know, remittances money mm. coming in, yeah. over $8 billion, yeah. okay? Now, foreign direct investment, mm. again, coming in, mm -hmm. 
Now that's con that's in the order of 11 billion, you know, 12 billion, somewhere around there. Yeah. Official development assistance coming in, yeah. you know, 3 billion, 4 billion, somewhere around there. So yeah. if you really think about the money coming in, yeah. that's, you know, more than enough to pay for the trade deficit. Mm. Do you expect 2011 to see more of remittances or more of FDI inflow? The remittances, uh, probably it's not going to go up that much mm. because the you know, global economy yeah. you know, may not do that well. Now, the foreign direct investment, mm. I think you know, it's going to be in the stable. The, it's been increasing you know, mm. uh, gradually. So mm. in terms of money coming in, mm. it's very stable. For Vietnam, right now, at this stage of development, mm -hmm. you need trade deficit. Thank you.